to license it. Meep, meep. Hi everybody and a warm welcome back to Maple Leaf Matchbox Makeovers. I'm Andrew and on the bench today is a 1976 Matchbox VW Mark I GTI Golf. They're very very popular and plentiful. No collector's item here. Mine has obviously been kid painted. Looks like it got a special magic marker treatment and that decreases its value even more. No worries though, as all my cars get stripped down and repainted and I'll do the detailing that Matchbox usually glosses over. Give this video a thumbs up if you would, and be sure to tune in in the near future for a couple of special builds, first with the Diecast Mafia, and then a special buddy build with my pal Perp Huart from Quebec, Canada on May 22nd. If you don't know Perp's channel, then I'll leave a link in the description so you can check it out. He loves doing exotics like me, and we're going to have fun doing the BMWs together. The Matchbox Golf was produced from 2020 to the present, and the scale size is not even listed on the bottom of the car, but I do know it's number MB1200. The plastic base on this one and a one-piece plastic interior. I'm going to change the color on that and dress it up a little bit. And what a relief for a change. There's no damage on the windshield. It's almost pristine in the condition it's in now. You ever seen this technique used before to pop off the wheels? Only works on a plastic base and it takes a nanosecond and a little bit of pressure and they just fling right off. I think there's going to be a wheel swap in this little guy's future though. You know, each of these cars that I do has some kind of memory for me and it was in 1977 that one of my high school buddies fathers brought home a brand new VW Rabbit as it was branded and marketed in the States and in Canada. So this car is special to me because it's the car that I learned to shift gears on well outside the earshot of my buddy's dad. There was some serious crunching going on let me tell you. By the way, I got my driver's license on August 16th, 1977. Do you know what else happened on that day? The king of rock and roll, Elvis Presley, died. And that date is forever stamped on my license. And I don't mind, because I'm Elvis fan number one. The little golf was in the paint stripping gel overnight because I'm never in a real big rush and that pretty well guarantees that it's going to slide off nicely and it does. I use the brass brush here just to get into the shot lines and get the little hard to reach places. But it doesn't all come off, never really does, and I don't mind because I quite enjoy the bare metal detail process in these makeovers. So I'll use a Dremel tool and a couple of different attachments that you can see to take care of that and get it ready for the paint process. The Golf Mark I is the first generation of a small family car manufactured and marketed by Volkswagen. It was noteworthy for signaling VW's shift of its major car lines from rear-wheel drive and rear-mounted air-cooled engines 
to front-wheel drive with front-mounted water-cooled engines that were often transversely mounted. The Golf was the much-anticipated successor to the legendary Volkswagen Beetle. The genesis of the whole project goes back to 1969 when the VW Director General named Kurt Lotz visited the Turin Auto Show. After selecting his six favorite cars of the show, he discovered that four of the six were designed by Giorgetta Guigiaro. And Guigiaro was then invited to Wolfsburg in January 1970 to work on the development project codenamed EA337. The design brief provided by Volkswagen specified a C-segment car with a two-box body in three and five door versions. As you see I've decided to go with the very popular red paint motif on this one. It's going to get two colors ultimately. And while that first base coat on the body dries I give a primer coat to the interior and then I airbrush on some Vallejo model air called Mud Brown. Give it a tan leather look. I always take time to paint the underneath of the chassis so that it's pitch black and therefore you don't see anything when you look up through the wheel wells. And some black wash underneath that on top of a gray paint job just for an oily appearance. And this is the most precise brush painting that I need to do on this project. Each of the GTIs is distinguished by the black wheel well arches. And so to be a true GTI, I need to do some micro painting on those flares. And don't forget the inside of the wheel wells. And to cover all the details, this has two front windshield wipers and one rear wiper. They're just the color of the windshield plastic, so I'm going to highlight them with the finest black Sharpie that I've got. And you know what? It's almost impossible to do this perfectly. So here's a tip. In this little bottle cap, I've mixed 50% nail polish remover and 50% water to dilute it down dip the end of a toothpick in there and just rub that around and it's just like an eraser. So now it is a perfectly painted windshield wiper. Cool. As an experiment on this GTI Golf, I'm adding a printed grill with the headlights and the VW badge and the GTI badge as well and I've also printed the taillights today. Now we're just going to see how well it works out. And whenever possible I like to use these dollar store miniature rhinestones as much more authentic looking headlights than just the silver or white paint that we normally use. Special touch as always, the customized license plate. And I'll inspect that under my magnifying glass. There's the wheel swap. It's a GTI. need to speed that up a little bit. And one final thing I'm going to do is take this silly little plastic nub of an exhaust pipe off. I'm going to grind it down and add one of these tiny ferrules that you get from the electrical supply aisle in the hardware store. I have to cut that down to length and it'll fit in perfectly right there. But first I do a little semi-gloss black touch-up on where I did the grinding 
super glue and I've got an authentic looking exhaust pipe. You can see all the parts of this project. There's the tan interior. Wheel swap. The black chassis bottom was painted gray and given the black wash and everything's cured and dried and ready to reassemble. And this is literally as easy as one, two, three. a little press and it clicks into place and I'm totally happy with the way that turned out. There's always more car information in the description below. You can read about the VW GTI Golf and find out a little bit more if that's something that interests you. Let's take a closer look now. I think the new wheels look great super glossy shine on that after two clear coats front grille with the rhinestone headlights look good and you can see that i did a black body line on the bottom under the doors tan interior side Mirrors got done, and it's still a roller. That's important to me. Kid paint markered up. Stock wheels on that. And see if you like what I did to this. Is my reimagining of the VW Mark I GTI Golf. I like to do the exotics, but here's a civilian car that you can take to the mall. I think it's looking terrific, don't you? It goes into a blister pack and it'll end up as a special arrival at the Goodwill store in my community as a gift for a little boy or girl. Thanks for visiting today and I hope you'll come back again and often. It's coffee time.